Well, welcome everybody to Social Selling for Technology Leaders. My name is Matthew. My special guest today is Gunnar Habits from uh, Hootsuite. Uh, I'm really excited to present this uh, webinar today, or, or basically let Gunnar present the webinar today. He's literally written the book on social selling, and um, uh, and I've had a look at that. It's it's really really useful because you know when when we come to selling, it's not just the act of you know making that call or or putting out that piece of marketing, making that call, and hopefully closing the sale. What really the intention here is to, to be to become known, liked, and trusted. And the best way to do that is through social. The, the amazing thing about social is we've got direct access. This is directly to the person. Whereas a lot of marketing is put out there, and it's just it's uh, it, it's sort of a broad uh, machine gun approach, with spray and pray that uh, type of thing. Whereas with social selling, it's it's really direct. We can connect with those individuals. We can make a connection. Uh, we can have a conversation and grow up from there. And Gunnar's got uh, some really great slides coming up today. He has actually parlayed and, and turned social selling to such a level that he was able to win a job at one of the world's biggest social media companies um, by doing social selling. So this mm -hmm. is not just somebody who's who talks the theory, talks the talk. He actually walks the walk. And I'm really excited. So welcome, Gunnar. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, Matthew. We really appreciate also inviting me. And I attended a couple of your other webinars. Uh, we met earlier on as well. So then happy to be in this audience, which resonates very well with me because I'm in software, I'm in tech, I'm a software programmer by trade back in the days. And also I, I discovered actually social selling about seven, eight years ago. And when I came to Sydney in 2016, I recognized that compared to Central Europe, he is much more about connecting, bringing people together. And I recognize LinkedIn is a tool for doing that. Ah, very cool. Excellent. Well, look, um, how are we going to get into this, uh, Gunnar? Can you go ahead and share your screen now? And I'll just a uh, few more uh, housekeeping things. Uh, please put your questions in the Q&A. If the question and answer box, don't use chat. Uh, chat doesn't work in this webinar. So we've got Q&A open. What I'd love you to do is just uh, as Gunnar's going through it, ask those questions in there. And I'll interrupt when appropriate, sometimes maybe inappropriate, but uh, I'll, I'm going to break his flow up because I really want to make sure this is a really high value session for you and really practical uh, because, you know, it's all well and good to talk about the high level uh, ideas and generalities, but we want to get really practical with this session and give you something to take home and go, this is what I'm going to do in the next couple of days on LinkedIn. Uh, we're going to pick on LinkedIn, but, you know, obviously you can do that in a lot of platforms, but LinkedIn is really my favorite and, and certainly Gunners as well. And we want to make sure that we're, you're actually getting some action out of this. It's uh, this sure this is going to be interesting and entertaining, but I want this to actually be educational. So and 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 I guess action focused. So look, Gunnar, I'm going to um, shut up. Everybody can find the Q and A box uh, when you when you've got something that comes up for you, and I'll pass it over to you, mate. Thank you so much. So let's get started. So I call it social selling for software and technology leaders. Very well knowing that some of you might be in professional services, but a lot of this also applies to you. So you do not need to be a tech person to operate LinkedIn. And funny enough, very often the most technology affine people don't even use it well enough. So that's interesting. And you mentioned also practical. So that's also on the subtitle uh, of my book that you can see here. Practical guide to using LinkedIn for your profile, pleasure and profit. And I might have been the only book also who talks about LinkedIn and pleasure. Speaking of the book, so everyone who registered and attends, um, and also those who see the recording then later, they will receive a free chapter from the book to get something highly practical to start with. And the book basically consists on 42 double pages. So it's really in a way of you open the book, you read something from top left to bottom right with four tips how to put it into action. I wanted to have it as practical as possible. So for those who don't know me yet, so my name is Gunnar, name is Swedish, I'm from Switzerland. I came to Sydney seven years and about one month ago uh, after a long career at HP. So there I learned more the corporate side here, I learned more about the great set of smaller, fantastic software vendors, which all declare Sydney as their home for Asia Pacific. Uh, I'm blogging for about social selling for 262 weeks in a row, I think, about that. So about five years, every week I write about that. And that also that Hootsuite found me from that and from having an online course about that. So then uh, in sense of book writing, I'm some of those who like to do something with free time that gets a bit practical. So therefore I published uh, a range of books. This is book number 24. 
So let's talk about book social number, selling. Wait a minute, book number 24? Yes, yes, yes. I just found number 25 uh, on Amazon as well that comes out in March. Yeah. The majority <laughs> of books... Not at I, all. I, <laughs> the majority of books I published are travel books. Think about Lonely Planet, but from German publishers. And as you can guess, with the change of the web and the way of people travel, there's not that many books written. So it was an honor to uh, write another book about Switzerland, my home country. Oh, very cool. So that was nice. Coming next year. Yeah. Excellent. Written by myself, not with ChatGPT. So then uh, <laughs> I prefer, prefer to, do, to, to have their own expertise. Hey, actually, Gunnar, uh, uh, you mentioned ChatGPT, and it's really obvious to me uh, because I use it a lot when people are using ChatGPT to comment and 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 communicate on on LinkedIn. It just doesn't seem as natural. So um, the chat, it's a great tool. I use it literally every day to give me ideas and 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 brainstorm stuff. But um, but please use your own, I guess, uh, personality because that'll come through if you're communicating in a certain way online, and then you meet somebody face to face, and it doesn't sound like you. It's going to be that disconnect. So so um, I'm glad you brought that up early. Yeah, uh, actually, I see ChatGPT like my mate. I can ask him. I call him him something, uh, and then. ChatGPT is actually um, is not complaining if I ask again. So that's uh, uh, that's uh, like uh, this is quite nice in that sense. Uh, and one of one of you here on the on on the session today, Jolanta, you also showed this today in one comment that I remember uh, how you use it in a similar way as a kind of your your friend or your buddy. It works, by the way, very good for social selling purposes when you have a large screen because on the left hand side you can get the inspiration from these tools like ChatGPT. On the right hand side, you create your own stuff out of this one instead of a pure copy and paste. So let's get started on this one. So what social selling actually is, is different if you ask uh, whoever, everyone has a different uh, definition for this. So in my view, it is a clever approach of adding social media and digital tools to enhance business conversations. And yes, I even mean the phone. So many people think, oh, it is replacing. No, it's adding. Email never replaces the phone. Therefore, social media never replaced email, not replaced the, uh, the phone either. So it's a selection of things we need to know about when to use what. But the purpose, and there I asked ChatGPT about in December last year when it was new, what is social selling? And it said, it is to sell on social media. I said, mm -mm, not good. In the meantime, it learned, so answers getting better. But my idea here is the purpose of this is to enhance the business conversations. It is a piece of sales and a piece of marketing marketing is talking to an audience sales is talking to an individual as a social seller we share with the public which has a marketing type of possibility or uh, interpretation but then we get and take it into private again and that is when the real stuff happens uh, these are the conversations so let's look how that how we go further and in the book i found one way uh, how i can make that happen and this one way, I put it based on Lego bricks. With the age of six, I won my first Lego championship. That was very nice as a young boy. The bad thing is what was also the last time. But so what? I still kept using Lego. And what I've done when I came to Sydney, I bought the Sydney Opera House set in Lego. That was really, really nice. And uh, whenever I, I see the original, um, then I must say it really is very close to the Lego model. So why I use Lego? Because it has a modular aspect. And I take social selling as a term into four steps. The and when you build something, normally you build something to the top, like uh, all of the high-rise buildings here in our major cities. But when you stand in front of something big that you want to start, then you have the feeling you will never make it. You will never really properly en embrace the journey. So I built my Lego to the right-hand side because it's a time. By time, we get better. So the first step, I call it complete because obviously when our LinkedIn profile still reminds us on the days when it was an online CV tool, we need to change this. We need to show our personality, who we are, whom we help to achieve what. Not bragging too much, like 10 times in President Club and all of this kind of stuff, which is awesome, but is not necessarily good here. As a customer, I would feel, oh, he always sold too much and I should have maybe not uh, given in in terms of negotiation so yes. i complete this and you see it's seven uh, it's six long but it's a quite an effort to do it once i've done that based on a real good 
complete magnetic profile, then I go and would like to connect with people. And that works well when they then see us that our profile looks well in order, obviously. And the connection is nothing that I do only once. Obviously, it's, it's a kind of a routine in it. And you can see this step is uh, more focused, but long. Same for the next one. We add content. Because if you only click on connect, we build a Rolodex form of business cards that doesn't do anything. But the content makes a difference. I can share my expertise, or even better, I can share what the services and products I'm, I'm uh, uh, responsible for help others, like my clients, to achieve their outcome. That's the best form of it. And when I've done this, and I have some content there, then it's time to convert that. And the magic happens if you put it all together. So then you again, you add someone else who commented on a piece of content because their network saw that. And then the magic happens. You can add the three colors, blue, yellow, and green, blue, yellow, and green. And every now and then, once a quarter, every year, whenever you add another red one, and that adds even more stability. I added this model at the very last day before submitting the script to my publisher. That was quite funny. I thought I'd go to a Lego shop and play this by myself, but I found and got the permission to use this uh, in a more official form, actually from Lego. It was very good. So it's a modular approach, and we cannot do it all the time, obviously, because we also need to work. But social selling is a part of work. So if you've... I, I, by the way, I also say that... LinkedIn is my newspaper and I'm the editor. And that's relevant for everyone. Whoever says, oh, what's in the feed is not for me. It's totally out of, out of context. Well, it's our behavior. Like Facebook, like Instagram, whatever we engage with, whatever we watch, we like, we comment on the algorithm beliefs, give me more. Mm. So it's all about us. And if you really pay attention, LinkedIn shifted quite a bit. So we had it at, at the beginning, more about the, the corporate, um, let's say, CV style of who we are. Okay, get it. In 2014, content came that you could put art, articles on. It got better and better. And those people who get the most out of it these days are not corporations with their branded teams. It's more clever content creators. And they taught us a lot over the last two years, maybe, how you can get attention because that's what we want. We want to get eyes to whatever our agenda is. We would like to convert conversations. I call Again, it. Kind of just on that, um, the, the the expansion of of the fact that the human is more interesting than the corporation is that the the most followed accounts are Bill Gates and Richard Branson, not Microsoft and Virgin. And so, and that's a, something that I talk to my clients about is is share content on your feed. Because, yes, your business is interesting, but never going to be as interesting as you as an individual. So, uh, so, so uh, that's one thing that I talk about quite often. We, I, and actually, I, I, I'm not checked this with you. Do you agree with that? Is that is that something that lines up with how you think? One hundred percent. So, if you look into statistics of of how many followers someone has, I, I always always talk Virgin and Richard Branson as well as a good example. There's maybe a ten to one ratio of how, how many people are following him compared to the company. Yeah, and of course. Particularly for those where the leader is uh, a charismatic person, think about Elon Musk as well, um, then people want to follow. But it's not only the one at the top. And what, what we know very well, particularly here in Australia, very often C-suite professionals are rather silent mm. because they totally are missing out. And that is an, has a negative impact on the talent. Would I want to work for an organization which somehow prevents their leaders to be visible, to be human, to engage with? No, I prefer that we are visible. I understand also from my work here at Hootsuite that if you work in regulative industries and in a financial services space, you cannot share everything. Take yeah, large insurances. One of them in the US, I know they tried it. A broker wanted to share this fantastic new product has a guaranteed return on their superannuation equivalent of he tried to press enter and it doesn't work because the word guaranteed in that sense is a no-go. So mm. who should block that? Very good. But so then the creators, they shared us more than influencers, by the way, 
think George Clooney, but rather the creator. They shared us how to get eyes to our content. So I will talk about three topics in the webinar today. The first one is the hook, how we can catch attention. The second one is the carousel, how to show your story. So in, in, the, in, the, in the book writing or creative writing area, people would say, show, don't tell. So then we, I show you how, how you can show your story. And then the third one is commenting, how to keep engagement. And actually, commenting is very often the first moment where many of us start to find our own voice. Because it's, it takes quite a bit to get out there and write something. Not everyone would like to do it. But finding the voice, how we write on comments, is the perfect way to, uh, to get started on that. So no, no, I just want to jump the in there. My uh, our head of digital marketing, she's uh, under thirty and from Melbourne, and very, very up with the uh, up with the times. And so that that's so our head of uh, digital is her name's Leah. And uh, one thing that I asked her about is in relation to uh, you know growing social. And she actually said that the commenting, making comments, is a really powerful way to get noticed. So so putting content out there is great, but you can actually really she used the word hijack, but I think she was trying to be exciting about it. But you can really get into the conversation by by finding the people. Uh, you know, Daniel's part of this. So we've had a lot of conversations about account-based selling, uh, account-based marketing. By commenting and having insightful, thoughtful comments, not just good job, that's, yeah. you know, but, you know, being a bit thoughtful, that brings the and it brings your attention because the the important part is first step in any uh, I guess b interaction is getting attention. There's the only reason all of us here today don't have more business is not enough people know about us. If everybody in the world knew what who we are and what we did, then we would be inundated with business. So uh, it's about getting that attention, trading attention. Gary V talks about trading attention. And so we can do that by commenting. So I, and I'm sort of reiterating what you're saying, but I want to make sure that really hits home because you're, you're, you're putting out some real gold here. I want to make sure the people in the audience are, are really going, hey, that's a thing I can do. Find my top 20 or 30 people I want to do business with. Go create alerts in, uh, in, in, the, in the platform and make a comment. Sorry, mate, yep. carry on. Exactly that. So let's start with the hook. So a question uh, that you could maybe be so kind answer in the Q&A, not the chat, it's a QA. and a How do you normally start a LinkedIn post for those who are writing posts? Do you start with a title like Monday morning motivation post? Or do you put out a statement or do you put out a question? Meaning, question. what is the really, what is the first line, second line, third line? How do you start? It's like in a newspaper. If the start is boring, you will not read it. And that is often a tricky thing because we write it from our view, what we have to say. But we should pay attention into what our audience would like to have. And the typical thing is if you, if you would just share something from someone else without any commentary, then we totally miss the mark. And that, of course, is not good. So uh, keen to see if anyone is, is, is sharing something there in the Q&A, just type in something. Or actually, uh, you know, Gunnar, I think that my I, I've been guilty of just putting stuff out there without any real structure. I haven't really thought about what that is. So I've gone, oh, well, I want to say this. I want to promote that. So uh, I haven't even, so maybe there's people in the audience who have not really thought about uh, how they um, how they go about it. They just put some stuff out. So um, so we've got some people saying all three are good, but which one do you use, uh, Jolanta? Um, so is there one that you particularly use? Um, so maybe people are a bit shy today on uh, on the. Yeah, on we, the... we get get started to it. So let let me get further on this one. Yeah, we'll just carry I on. Believe... Just by the by the um, way, uh, chat is switched off, everybody, and use the Q and A box. Yeah, uh, some people exactly. have said uh, oh, the chat's not working. Yeah, I, I missed adding <laughs> that in the start. So that's one thing. What I said: no hook, no look, and that's a tricky thing. So here's an example from Simon, a content creator from South Africa, and he said how I got free coaching from the three top creators blank line without spending a dime this is how i did it and then you see see more there's one important thing what we need to know if we click on something like like or we comment it's one side of thing but clicking see more counts higher in the algorithm than a like that's good and apparently he has something interesting to say and he came in it with something that i said yeah i really would like to know it 
And do you see the most important thing of this way of what he has done? The second line is blank. That's important. It's totally blank. It counts as a line because the Seymour sits on the third. Another example from one of the big, big gurus. You see how many, how many likes came on that one. Seven facts about LinkedIn everyone should understand, no matter what certain gurus tell you. This way, of course, due to the gurus, where in the meantime he's one of them, uh, makes sense as well. He has more followers than people in his country. He's from Bosnia, and he uh, writes copy for Coca-Cola and other companies. And see the number of comments and even reposts. But most people just click on repost without adding anything, missing chance. This is the approach what I've taken uh, recently. I take uh, an image with a question. And whatever the text above this, when you scroll, you see the image. So I put the content that I want to share in the image instead of just sharing a photo. That was Roger Christie from Northern Beaches here, north of Sydney. And he is one of those who helps particular C-suite uh, and board directors to be more active and visible on it. And he says social media silence is risky. So with this one, of course, there was high engagement because we come in with the questions. So for me, the questions are good or surprising things like what those two other gentlemen had. So Gunnar, you just said, I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. Did you just say that getting somebody to click on see more was more interesting to LinkedIn than a like? Totally. Yep. And I hope everybody caught that because um, I'm just sitting here going, well, that's that's in, that's new that's new for me. So that's great. Thank you. See more. That's you very need to cool. write the first part that it said. So if you don't get them to click on see more in three seconds, your post gets ignored. Three, five, whatever number of seconds. But if you only scroll through, there's a picture of something, whatever it is, you some lines. But if people don't click on it, then they don't stop in the feed and really read it. So we need to ensure that 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 goes well. If you only write something like Monday morning motivation and so on, and then the free line, they're thinking like a headline. LinkedIn posts don't have a headline. They don't have a title. So then it's missing real estate. So that is not necessarily good. And play around with it. Check what resonates with you, what you would open. Observe yourself being a reader to prepare how you would write. It's the most important post of the uh, important part of the post. Then examples. Think about on the tech and software side. Three underrated tips to do this or that. Uh, I work with um, software for many service providers with zero trust. That's always security is an important topic. I surely can find some way to make that happen. How to get this outcome without that obstacle. The how to helps to show others that they can also do it. How I is more like egocentric myself. It's not everyone's personality to do. It's a bit more the bragging style. But if, let's say, a coach overcame something, then of course, he, his or her audience want to know how they did that. So that's a good one, a good example as well. I, I used it when I said, this is how I came to Australia out of a corporate layoff. Um, or the ugly truth about something. You want to know when that's a good topic? Um, or <laughs> steal this tool from me. Particular sales hacks, something like this, that you can do. Uh, you can say something about the way how you help sales leaders to do something. Say, that's what helped my customers steal this from me. Here's yeah, like how that. my client achieved. And that's good because in success stories or case studies, we normally put our product and services in the in in, um, in the foreground, but it should be more what the clients achieve with this. So that's a very important thing. But I work in partnerships, so I always think about the whole aspect of not only my services, but the partner who brings it or sells it, and then the end customer. But the end customer does something with it as well. If we are selling to government to to the to the um, to the um, uh, to the tax office, for example, then there is an outcome that we pay less tax. Okay, dreaming here, but um, that, that's a way of seeing what they do with this. Why someone uses it? Or try this if you struggle with that. So there's so many things how you can try to get a good start into something. Fantastic. Hey, we've just got a couple bit of feedback here. People are saying they use all three. They mix and match. Um, and, uh, you know, always you know, one, uh, Bianca is saying that she always tries to finish with a call to action. How do you feel about calls to action? I like it when the call to action doesn't sound like by me, but rather here is more info or the call to action becomes a call to think. Yeah, I love it. 
Good one. To reflect on something or to ask, do you agree? What's your experience? Because in the subconscious mind, when we read the right question at the end as a call to action, then we want to share our view and be comment because mm. the call to action is there to take action, obviously. And in that purpose, we want to see this. Oh, in our case here, please go and, and book for the webinar. Thank you for so many already coming. And and Peter says that he you know he tries to make his posts uh, conversational, initially conversational, to get the reader uh, interested. So thank you for that feedback, everybody. Yes, thank you for this. Also, particular Peter, because I know that's the way this conversational approach is what he has without that. And him and me acting on this in 2016, I most likely would not be here. <laughs> so there, there is there is a version to it. So the hook, the hook needs to sit. When we have the hook, we can think about what to do with it. Because the most engaging posts these days are called a carousel post. Technically, it is just uploading a document, but it looks like a carousel because we can swipe in horizontal mode compared to scrolling down. So it becomes um, a scroll stopper. A carousel. So, question Have you created a carousel post or uploaded a PDF to your post in LinkedIn already? Yolanta, you have done that. I know that. And Peter, you as well. <laughs> but for many others, I'm not so sure. I show I've you only just started doing it. Oh, yes. I will reveal how you have done it. <laughs> so, answer in the QA if you like. And I'll show you in the meantime how it can look like. So, Carousels are the most engaging way. They came about four, five years ago that you could upload a PDF. So the first people started to put out a PowerPoint, but PowerPoint is in landscape mode and you can't read it like this. It's a lot of text on it, on the mobile wouldn't work. But you can utilize it well. And in the meantime, brands would have a square image because they take this from Instagram, typically, same usage, but it's missing real estate. We all have mobile phones which are rectangular they are not square or most of them not so here's one example of one of those uh, storytellers he's also mad a mad scientist on data a beginner's guide to visual storytelling and that was i don't know 46 slides not sure how many actually and that's the way how he this on number 21 how he does it he explains a story in a highly visual way yes it takes some time to do it but compared to writing a long format article, something that can be consumed just by scrolling uh, in, in, in a horizontal way is awesome. And it's like, like the TikTokification of, uh, of of the world. We want smaller information faster, right? I need to write this down. TikTokification. TikTokification. I don't know. I don't think I just made that up. Well done. Well done, <laughs> well done Matt. So the, the purpose is to mix visuals and words, maybe not too many words, yeah. so that it can be grasped easily. Um, and that is good. And if you click on this on a desktop version to make it as large, you can also save it as a PDF. And that's not a bad thing, particularly to compare. So I, I download maybe 50 of them before I started my own to figure out font size and all of this one. But no need to overdo. I'll show you how that works. And as Bianca mentioned, at the end, you would want to have a call to action. Follow me to never miss a post. Click on, click on the bell, something like this. Well done. So now here's yours. Um, and you have done it in a nice, simple way. You have a question at the end. What's the best product to my tech business can create? And I, you have even an arrow. So I don't see the answer. So it wants me to scroll further. And then... You even say, oh, there is no such thing like a best product. And then you tell a story over the next couple of, of, of slides, what you mean about it, and you educate your audience in a way that you get in them on the first one, you explain, and then you close. If you like this, click follow for all things sales and marketing for tech and software businesses. And congratulations for 10 business in the past 25 years. Wonderful. That's good. <laughs> but I really like this because it's not too bragging, but you do it at the end. You basically you earn the permission of sharing this compared to some of those people who just say, hey, I'm the best. Yep. Earning the permission is something which I actually learned from Peter Stokov. Thanks for having me there. So here's mine that I tried as well. 
You should normally do it around six to 12 slides. That's good. Um, don't put 70. That makes no sense. I've done this together with, uh, with Michael Haynes. He attended my, uh, my book launch in May. And we are sitting next to each other, his book, my book, and we had a couple of minutes of discussion. I thought, what can I do with the, with the picture? Only sharing? No, no, no. This way, I, I thought, the message, how do you reach the ideal target audience with your content? And I used a tool, and hopefully nobody from Adobe is here, but I used a tool called Canva in order to make that happen. Very, very well known, it's Australian, one of the two, three big Australian known software companies alongside Atlassian and Linktree. So, and in the middle, I tell a story, sometimes with black background, sometimes with light gray, whatever it is. And I explain what he basically said over a couple of slides with a little error to go on. And then at the end, I have my call to action as well saying, Michael also contributed to my book. And here you can order a signed copy, obviously. One day I would like to meet um, uh, this lady here. Uh, of course, it's a mock-up picture, but I really like this way. Maybe I need to create the t-shirt by myself really good it's fantastic is... she's got the t-shirt mate that's so, so well done on that <laughs> that's <laughs> a good way how to go through for me personally i like the visual stuff on linkedin and uh anything any idea i have starts with something visual like uh a book cover for example just i've done the book cover for my book coming out in september yeah also visual but we can easily do this the question how so let me show you how that works and it's not too difficult to do. Imagine we have an idea what we want to post about. And one of the best things what I learned is you show your audience something what you learned where you know your audience should have been there as well. For example, attending an event. I attended a wonderful event at LinkedIn office last week, Tuesday, took pictures, shared what works, and that gets engagement. Not only from those who attended. So, on LinkedIn, we write the idea of a post. We don't publish it yet, but we write down what we want to say. Then we focus on the hook line. How do we want to start? What type of question, for example? If we think about the visuals, what images should go there, and then we complete and write the rest. But we, I want to have the thoughts on the hook and on the visuals, and then we go to, for example, Canva. We create a new design. It's actually much easier than I thought. Because we say LinkedIn carousel, it's there. They typically come in five by four, so it's a bit longer than white, 1500 by 1200 or a bit lower, so that always fits. And there are so many templates. Here's just four of them as an example. I can type in something that it will fine tune, but I grab one, take the one at the, the, the bottom right, the light one, five tips, and so on. That already is set in a way your picture your name and everything, proper font size, you can add your colors, have a template, have it there, done, easy. It's much easier than I thought. But you need to focus that the, what is on the title page is really appealing. You can tell the story on the other ones in a smaller text. The last page will have the call to action. You save it as a PDF in Canva. It even works also for the free version of Canva. The paid version, only gets us access to uh, more, more, let's say, visuals. Uh, more yeah, a bigger image library and, uh, and more good. options for downloading, but you don't need it to do this. You don't need it. You don't need it at all. What it also does, it gets you a chance to upload a brand kit that always comes in the same colors. But yep. I would say create one template in a free version, which you like, and then you simply copy that. There's no need for that for the brand part, but at least that's how I, how I went on it. And then you add the PDF into the post that you want to share, you share it, or you schedule it to hit the right timing. And that is one mistake that many people do. They work on a post and they think, now I have it, it needs to get out. But what about it's 11.30 PM? The audience will not see it. Also not next day because so much else is in the field. So therefore, um, scheduling is an important topic that you hit the right timing when the audience is on the platform and in the mood that they might be on the platform while queuing for the barbecue on Saturday afternoon, but then they do not want to read any type of business related stuff. So that's important. I used to schedule uh, for many, many, many years with Hootsuite. In the meantime, it's even possible directly in LinkedIn uh, to schedule a post. It's easy. 
Do you have any tips on when the right time is? When um, you know, Because the, traditionally they talk about email at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday or a Thursday seems to be, well, that's when, you know, we send out tens of thousands of emails for us and our clients every week. And we, we've just sort of chosen uh, those. Uh, every now and then I go and Google the answer to that. But um, uh, do you have any specific? I mean, you've probably got some insights there from Hootsuite. Yeah, yeah, indeed, because if you post on Hootsuite, it will tell based on history and insights um, and AI when is the best time to post. Uh, that also really depends and it changed quite a lot uh, due with the pandemic. So I also, I'm also i also convinced uh, based on my own history and my own observation, Tuesday morning and Thursday morning are better than Wednesday morning and uh, Monday morning. The commute time is getting less in the afternoons compared to the past. Uh, particularly if you commute from home to home, it's maybe just two meters. So then you don't really do this anymore. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I, I observed that Friday doesn't work that well as in the past, but, and a big but, not an end, it depends also the type of content. Since um, end of August, I started to share meeting with someone, having coffee with me and sharing what they are doing great stuff. Uh, in a series which I call 42 Coffees, and I got 10 times more impressions than normal because I tell a relatable personal story highlighting someone else instead of anything corporate. And that resonates, and that mm -hmm. works on a Friday morning or Friday afternoon, more yeah, than it. regular stuff. So the best time also depends on the type of content. Got it. What are people doing on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings where they open my emails and read your posts? <laughs> At least there's one thing that apparently they've done already on Monday morning to set themselves up for the week or corporate meetings in Monday morning that therefore sometimes this time takes away the focus of uh, LinkedIn emails and so on. But you say it's already the week is clear, what will come. So then there's more time for doing so. Got it. That, that of, that, that's clear. Good one. So getting into the third topic, which are the comments. Question for the Q&A. How many comments on your post do you typically turn into one-on-one -on -one conversations per week? Well, while people are answering, I'll I'll, I'll give you my answer. It's uh, I do a probably a pretty poor job of this in the past uh, until my marketing manager has told me to go ahead and do that. Uh, but basically zero um, for me. Uh, I do the I, I have conversations in DMs, but uh, you're absolutely you're, for me not very many. Uh, let me just grab the Q and A box. Uh, James says zero. Um, so that might be the, uh, uh, you might be the, uh, the superstar here, Gunnar, seeing as you don't only turn it into a, uh, a conversation, but actually a job. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, Jolanda saying three to five. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well done, Jolanda. Yeah. yeah. In, in a good week, I would be around 20, otherwise 10. Wow. Very good. Uh, what is very helpful is a large screen because you can right click so many other tabs to really do that, uh, in a, in a focus time on working on LinkedIn. Instead of just uh, not don't get got up out of bed having the phone and then try to handle about this and then you need to click too much and that doesn't work so well. So really focus on it uh, helps. Uh, that also comes to the fact when we actually want to do the work on LinkedIn. Many people, particularly in sales, they believe that it requires extra time that we don't have in the day. But when we all started with email some 30 years ago, it was not extra time towards writing letters and work it was just shifting and blending same thing here so we can work linkedin 30 minutes a day and have a big impact because we go more structured to it great so, tips commenting is the underrated way to find your voice you can provide insightful comments not great posts and well done because that is a disservice if you only say great posts and well done then one thing happens Social media is never about facts, it's all about perception. And my perception, if somebody does it constantly, it looks like their English level is not good. They are time poor. They therefore cannot plan their day well. They only want to be seen and have their name out there because about them, not about really commenting on something decent. So therefore it's not good. So we should be recognized for the quality of the thoughts and particular when we can showcase and comment and adding something to it, maybe be provocative, hi right, James? So then you can add a lot of substantial on it and get the discussion going. So that would be very good. Um, 
add some more examples to it. There's so many ways taking someone else in it when, when it's good to do so. So that is what works. So we can also then read further comments and figure out, ah, that person had a good thought. Maybe it might be good to see who they are. Right click, check in their profile. Oh, that's good. They're already in my second grade, but I never found them. But their commenting is good. Maybe they have comment the content, which is good. And this way, how you can add your network with people who are interesting. And not, by the way, taking others is always a tricky thing. If I take 20 people every week, maybe even same or similar people, and those don't react on that, neither on the post nor on the comment, then LinkedIn demotes this action of tagging and says, ah, nobody wants your stuff. And that prevents the reach, not good. So we need to be highly careful when we tag others. It has a bit of this uh, permission-based approach that we had beforehand. What you also can do, some creators do it, to use a PS strategy to add something more. So you do not want to be the first one who comments on your thought, on your own post because that also LinkedIn doesn't like and it looks like too much. It's all about me. But as soon as two or three comments are there, you can then add something like here's a further reading to it or what I still want to say about it. And don't forget this or that point. And then you can continuously go on. And by the way, a funny tip. There are some people who like their own posts. I'm one of those, but I don't do it straight away. But maybe after two days and I see, oh, it's going on, I can press a like as well. Hmm. Two days later, I would unlike my post. And then I take another reaction, let's say maybe hand clapping as an appreciation to what all the others did. Funny enough, this action of me unliking and liking gets more reach to it. Wow. Doesn't explain any reason. There's not real statistic about it, but it works constantly. And I do not mean it in a, in a too egocentric way that I'm the one who really needs to like my post. I would not do it when I'm the only one. <laughs> but when there's already 20 on it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Great tip. Here's an example. There was one, uh, one person, Tolga, he... Uh, commented, I could not have said it better. As I work on my own brand, consistency has been the true north. I appreciate the tip. I said, thanks. And of course, if somebody comments nicely, two lines at least, it's worth thanking them. Technically, it's better to first comment and then like their stuff instead of the other way around. And then even so got further. So then you can get into this. One. And the beauty comes when then the next person joins a conversation. That's good. And I'll show you the example here. Uh, that's when I worked at, at Nogin, there were risk management, crisis management, so a lot of thoughtful stuff. So I wrote the uh, the weekly blog for the company. Uh, here that was all about, with the logo at the bottom. And then Kerry added many lines to it. He's a real expert in governance risk and compliance. So that's good. Um, and then he started. And then we went back and forth. There's always a hidden agenda. He would like, obviously, also to get his brand out as being known in the field. And he's a seat at the Governance Institute or whatever leadership position over there. My hidden agenda, I had to fill a panel session for, for an event. I needed to have three people who are expert in the field. So I thought, Kerry is a good one to invite. But then the magic happens. Matthew wrote plenty of lines. It's small, but only that you see it was from the same post. I commended him and then Craig added. So at the end, Kerry has been on the panel, Matthew has been on the panel, Craig came as a visitor. It started with posting. It starts with commenting that I can see that those people have something to say. And I signed an agreement with Matthew. It was a good one. So That's it can cool. lead to something. But of course, we need to find the right moment to turn a public conversation into private. Obviously, we do not want to reveal too much competitive stuff um, and so on. But it's good to see something in public. It's highly helpful. So where to find the people that we would like to uh, uh, comment with uh, and so on. So one way is to say, let's check who viewed our profile. And the numbers here might be pretty low compared to the, the big gurus, but at least there's something. LinkedIn shows analytics. 
of the rows and followers and posts. And that was after I had a nice post, so it went down. So what? Doesn't matter. But there it says the profile viewers in the past 90 days. Premium Sales Navigator shows 90 days and more. The free version shows the last five people. So who has free LinkedIn need to check more often. And even though when you have the premium business, you can see not just 90 days, but the whole year. Then you can see back that plenty of people do this. But it's for me, it's not the number. I look then and want to find out more who that is. And that just need to do it maybe once per week to go a bit more systematic about it. The old filters over there are not very good. I cannot say, please give me everyone who's not from my company, who's maybe from these companies X, Y, Z, that I can filter it. It doesn't work. We need to go manually through, big screen, see first interesting people, right-click profile, check who they are, and figure out if there might be a good addition to the network for us. But maybe there's a good way how we can contribute to their content. That's what it's all about. So because what we want to have is apparently those people, for whatever reason, viewed our profile, maybe from the content, maybe they did it and also uh, started to connect with us, but so many don't put a reason to it. So then let's figure out who they are. Thank for watching the profile. And that's the start of conversations. That's important. What we want to have are the, are the conversation. And I, I give you, it's not on the slide, I give you a little formula. I call it offline, online, offline. I go to an event. I sit at a round table with someone. And one day it happened in just before the pandemic, I had the chance to see at, uh, I think, a Juniper Networks event at the establishment in Sydney. And then you exchange business cards. There was one gentleman, sympathetic one, more silent, not really sharing too much. But I thought by his introduction, might be interesting fellow to follow up with. How do we follow up? We grab the business card, we check him on LinkedIn, then we go away and normally nothing happens. And then he engaged with my content. Oh, hang on, thank you for liking this. And I did with his. And after half a year, nothing else happens because it was missing one thing, and that's the trigger. And I posted one day that I would be at a, um, uh, at a podcast in a community radio uh, in, in, in near Hornsby, north of Sydney. And at that time, immediately after that, he called me and said, Gunnar, you told me, you told this at that at that podcast. I said, how would you know this? And he was driving at the time to a customer and seeing this post for me made him actioning to jump on the podcast. And I told something in his area. And as we already started, it was not a, not a cold type of person. So we chatted occasionally over the over the year. And then it became more intense. And then we signed an agreement. So it starts with offline. It turns into online, into nurturing. And then it goes further and off we go. That's awesome. That's how it can work. Offline, Fantastic. online, offline. Yeah, really great. So we covered three things about the hook. We covered about the carousels. And we covered about the comments. This is not necessarily all totally linked in beginner stuff. I, I thought it, it went quite in some details how to do things to really stand out because what we would like to do here, we would like to get engagement and turn this, turn a conversation into anything that we can convert. Conversion can mean to have people joining here. Thank you for coming. Or whatever it means that, that we would like to achieve. That's an important topic. So what can we do with this? I have one feeling, what I see in, in our typical audience in, in the tech and software space, that many have challenges. And the question, do they see themselves there? Many of them are overcautious, particularly in the corporate space. They, they do not know, are we allowed to do this? Funny enough, many tech people have an affinity, missing affinity in using tech. They're not clear about sharing content. You can see they try to lead the pack, but not really, they don't really. So that's uh, difficult. And they're overwhelmed because when you look in the feed, it feels like totally irrelevant. Maybe they're in the wrong groups that they follow. Only connected by strangers because their content is not in order and then it's not clear where to start with it. It's quite difficult. And then they stop it. Or they're even overthinking. I came from Switzerland. What I learned in Australia is not everything perfect here. And that is good. So therefore, 
we should not be try to do perfect. Good enough is the next grade. Getting out there and learning this and doing this, that is what helped. And mm. some of you here who attended, I observed them over the time that their proficiency in sharing content turned into a higher likelihood of engagement, which turns into business, whatever that business means. So don't be the one who's only consuming and only listening without action because that doesn't move a needle at all. No way. Well, there's the story of the uh, of the pottery class, uh, sorry, the photography class. Uh, I, know, I heard it in a book. I think it was um, uh, Simon Sinek's book or something, one of those ones where he talks about how there was a, uh, there was a, a photography teacher broke the class up into two and said, okay, this group, you just need to submit one great photo for the term. And then this group, you just need to take photos every day. And what happened is the quality of the photos of the people who spent three months trying to get the perfect photo was nowhere near the quality of the photo that, uh, of photos of somebody who took photos every day. Yeah. So it's it's it. So just be okay with um. Uh, well, Alex Hamosi says be okay with sucking to begin with, uh, but as long as you continue to do it, you won't suck as much in the future. You're right. And actually, that is the case for most professions. I mean, when I started to be in sales, uh, I've been highly introverted, didn't want to even speak because it could be wrong. Yep. When I turned from product manager into sales management, I thought I need to tell all about the product. But hang on, no, completely different thing. So you need to learn the craft and this is nothing else than that. And there's one help that I can, I can and surely provide. And that is actually that you all will get. Uh, and that is um, the free chapter out of my book, Connect and Act, Systematic Social Selling. And there I reveal a lot of things. And that first chapter talks actually about uh, a bit more than that than 25% of the whole book that's already there. Fantastic. Matt, so, if any anybody, so grab that uh, grab that URL if you miss it or if you're doing something and you can't write it down, uh, obviously through emails, we'll go ahead and follow you up and make sure that you uh, you can get access to that book. Uh, look, that's fantastic, and I really appreciate your your time today, taking out your time out of your, your busy corporate schedule and uh, and, and coaching schedule and, and all the other and book writing schedule. Uh, Twenty five books, that's ridiculous. Uh, but well, good on you. Uh, not not bad. So, are there any questions? Uh, I know we're running up close to the time that we said we had allocated for today. Uh, are there any other questions people want to jump in? Of course, both of us are going to be available uh, on email and also uh, on the phone. Gunnar's even provided his phone number there. So uh, being very uh, open and uh, being very uh, available. Um, we've, we've just had some really nice people, you know, nice things said in here. People are definitely going to be putting up more PDFs. Uh, people talking you know, very much. Have you, you've really hit a nail there or hit a, hit a nerve when it comes to that, uh, Gunnar, about making sure that we are going to be putting those those carousels up so that's a good one and great tips around the um uh, using canva that's that's fantastic to uh to because one of the biggest impediments that i find in, in in posting content is i might have an idea but then actually going ahead and going well now what do i do with it how do i make that idea into something i can post that's consumable rather than just sort of writing a block of text and hoping for the best so so thank you for that. Um, James says, thank you. Very helpful and much appreciated. Like I think the, the little nuggets that you you talked about, uh, the, 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 the see more being more interesting than the like, um, the, the liking and unliking of your own post, that's, uh, that's really fascinating. It's probably a glitch in the matrix there that, uh, they, uh, that uh, you found there working the way you do. Um, so uh, if, there's any, if there's no other questions, we can, we can call it a day there. Gunnar, do you want to leave us with any uh, final thoughts? Yeah, social selling as a term doesn't necessarily mean that we need to sell something as a hardcore selling. You don't, you attend this webinar and you see me not offering something with a slash price in the Cyber Monday week or something like this. Uh -huh. The purpose of here, of this one has been to, to get some further insight what actually we all can do. And that's what's all about. For me, the social selling part is a lot about learning and sharing. Sharing what we learn from others and what works. And therefore you can, uh, can become known in the audience. You can prepare a personal brand in that sense and a reputation because social media is not fact, it's about perception. And I'm happy to be perceived as someone who likes to share and uh, and distributes knowledge at, uh, instead of someone who's hard for saying. What a great way to finish. Thank you very much. Uh, Monica says, thank you, loves the session. Didn't know that you could... Uh, do that with uh, Canvas. So you, I think you've really made an impact here today. Going, I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, much for uh, thank you, everybody, for joining today. 
Um, and if you need to, uh, you know, talk to either Gunnar and I, you, uh, you, you'll, you've obviously got our details. So look forward to communicating it. Maybe we'll uh, comment on the uh, on this post yes. <laughs> when we put it up. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye-bye now.